Hi everyone, I'm Kurt Wenzel. Welcome back to my cooking channel. Today we're going to be making an appetizer, fresh bruschetta. And today we're going to be making it on toast. So in our area, we mostly have French bread down here. We do, we can find Italian bread, but French bread is more prevalent in this area, in New Orleans, Mississippi area. So we're going to be using some French bread. We're going to be using some uh, fire roasted uh, peppers. We're going to be using some Campari tomatoes. If you're not familiar with the Campari tomatoes, these tomatoes are about the closest you can get to something that you would grow here in the garden by yourself. These you can actually make tomato, um, fresh tomato sandwiches with this. I don't know if you ever tried to make a fresh tomato sandwich with a tomato from the store. It just don't taste the same unless you grew the tomatoes yourself. But like I said, this is about the closest you can get to a homegrown tomato. And so, but we're also going to be using some uh, fresh parsley, some basil, some oregano, and other little dry spices, some olive oil. And also we're going to be using some feta cheese and some sharp provolone. Uh, also, I'd like to say if you're not familiar with sharp provolone, I know everybody gets provolone on sandwiches and stuff, but if you're not familiar with sharp provolone, this cheese stands alone. I mean, it's one of my favorite cheeses. I use it as a replacement to all other kinds of cheeses. So if you've not tried it, I would recommend it. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to take the bread, we're going to cut it on a bias and make some toast, and then we'll bake that for a few seconds, and then we're going to, once we mix up our mixture, we'll dab, dollop it on the toast and toast it in the oven, and it'll turn out real good. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start out by cutting up the toast. So we're going to basically start on the edge, and we're going to cut a little bit of an angle to it to make the piece a little longer. All right, and what we're gonna do, we have a little bit of melted butter. We're gonna take and season the butter a little bit. We're gonna put just a little bit of garlic powder in it. Not much, I mean, you can't really go wrong, wrong with it. Just put a little bit, you're just trying to give it a little bit of flavor. Most of the flavor is gonna come out of the bruschetta, but it just gives it a little extra something. Put a little bit of oregano in it, or a little bit of basil in it, just to, because like I said, we're gonna spread this on the toast, and we're gonna toast it for a second without the bruschetta mixture on top. So you're just gonna use this as just a little bit to uh, wipe right on the bread. So have a little brush here. And what we're gonna do is just take a little brush and dab it right there on the toast. By doing this, this gives it a little bit of extra um, strength for the toast because if you put a wet bruschetta sauce or a mixture that once we're done, like I said, it'll be real wet, it might make your toast a little soggy. So that's why I toast the bread first to give it a little more backing, I should, I should say. Put it in the oven, we're just going to basically put it on broil to just sear the top part of it because we don't really want to cook the toast because it's going to get cooked more once we put the bruschetta mixture on top of it. So it's just a little bit of cooking right on the top to sear it. Close the pores, I should say. All right, so we're going to turn the oven on to broil. We're going to put it on like a, a low broil. And while that's warming up, we're going to go ahead and start making our bruschetta mixture. So I'll stick this off the side and wait. All right, we're gonna open up the roasted red peppers. Now, you can fire roast your own peppers, which would taste better, but as a convenience thing, sometimes when I cook, I know there's um, points where you could use things, making everything from scratch, but sometimes people don't have time to do everything from scratch. So if I can find a product that's as close to doing it and saving me the time, I'm gonna utilize it. That's the way I cook. So we're going to take and pull some peppers out. And we're going to slice those up. And on 
the peppers, when I go to do them, I'm gonna run long slivers and then slice those up. Basically what I'm gonna try to do is dice it. Repeating till you got enough of it from the amount of people you're cooking for. All right, now that we've got the peppers all diced up, I'm going to go ahead and put them in a measuring cup because, again, I'm not really sure about measurements on this. I just normally cook from eyeball. So we're going to put this in a measuring cup to give you an idea about what I've got here. And I would say you're looking at probably like a little better than a half, between a half and three quarters of a cup of fire roasted diced red peppers. So now we're gonna put that in the bowl. Then we're gonna move on to the tomatoes. All right, I just got through rinsing the tomatoes. Please make sure you always wash all your vegetables. And then with these, we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're just gonna dice them. This in a measuring cup now. Let's see what this turns out to be. This looks about right for me. And this turns out to be right at about one cup of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna throw that in. All right, so now we've got some of the bruschetta mixture going. We're gonna go ahead and put the toast in the oven and broil it just for a little bit. We're gonna put it on the lowest. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the hot and I'm gonna go real fast with it. And I'm gonna leave the door open so I don't forget about it. This, like I said, we're basically just flashing the top. We don't wanna really cook it right now. We just wanna flash it to seal it. So when we put this liquidy concoction on top of the bread, it don't make all the bread soggy is what I'm trying to stop. All right, we're gonna pull these in just one second. Cause like I said, you don't wanna cook them, cook them. So like that, that's about what you're looking at right there. That's what you're trying to achieve. Just a little bit of brown on the top. All right, now we're gonna finish with our mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some green onion. Cut the green onion, we're gonna cut it down the center like this, long ways. So when we cut, get to the white part of it, we're gonna have, uh, instead of rings, we'll have more like slivers of the, of the white part. cut up some of the green onion part. And this part of it actually gives it a nice color to it too, as well. All right, so as far as measurements, let's see here, I'm gonna put all right, that's probably two tablespoons of the green and one tablespoon of the white part. Okay, so now we're gonna put some of the rest of the seasoning in. Uh, we're gonna put roughly a teaspoon of basil. 
And this is like dry, freeze dried basil. It's not totally fresh, but it's not a dry. And it, 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 it's got a very nice flavor to it. So basically one teaspoon of that, my first teaspoon was short, so that's why I had to add a little more. And then we're gonna add about a teaspoon of fresh parsley. Make it a teaspoon and a half of fresh parsley. And then we're gonna add just like a couple of good shakes of garlic powder. And we're gonna use some fresh garlic too. And a little bit of oregano. We're gonna put, say, maybe a half a teaspoon of oregano. And then we're gonna put a little bit of salt just a little bit of salt. And when I mention salt every time I cook, I know everybody's different. Some people are on heart medicine, blood pressure medicine. Salt is added just to taste. If you get to the end of any of my recipes and if they don't taste right to you, the only thing it will be lacking is salt. So I don't put a bunch of salt in my food. So salt is always added to your accommodation. You can actually put it on your plate when it's on the table. Fresh cracked black pepper. Like I said, that's not too much of that either. And then we're gonna mix this up. Oh, in my bag. We're gonna put our olive oil in. I almost forgot our olive oil. We're gonna put one tablespoon, make it two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. some of the fresh feta cheese. And like I said, this is just gonna kinda eyeball it. So there's like one, two, maybe two and a half teaspoons, tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons. And let's go ahead and mix this around a little bit and see what it looks like. And then the sharp provolone, that's gonna go on at the end. We're just gonna grate some up and sprinkle that on right at the end. After looking at it, I think I'm gonna add just a little more feta. I don't think you're gonna have too much of it. So we're gonna call it three tablespoons of feta. That's looking better. Yeah, it needed, like I said, just a little more feta. And feta is one of my wife's favorite cheeses. She puts it on everything. So let's go ahead and pull our toast over. I'm gonna throw some on it. All right, now we're gonna put some of that sharp provolone I was telling you about, we're gonna grate it up and just top it off the, on the top of the stuff right before we put it in the oven, so. On this cheese, I'm gonna use the more coarse grater on this one. It will have a tendency to crumble, so you gotta be gentle with it. But if I put it with the small fine, it like disappears. So we're just gonna put a, some of the coarse ground, or grated sharp provolone right on the top of them. Like I said, you don't have to have much. And this gives such a beautiful taste to the whole thing.
right, now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven. And again, we're gonna put it on the broiler on the bottom setting this time. And like I said, I like leaving the door open just so in case I forget about it. Uh, I don't know if it's just me or what, but I have a tendency to forget about stuff when I put it in this oven if I'm busy doing other things. But if I leave it cracked, I won't forget. It gets hot in here. You can see it cooking right before our eyes. The cheese is melting. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull it. And that's what it should look like. I'm gonna let it cool for a second before I put my mouth on it. You guys have to try this. It's a very simple, very fast little appetizer that is an explosion of flavor. So thanks for checking into us again and thanks for sharing. If you could, please subscribe, share it with your friends, tell some other people about it. We'd really appreciate it. Thank you for stopping in.